good family happy new year happy 2021 hope you guys uh new year is off to a great start uh with exciting plans for exciting um new beginnings and new things in 2021 really just wanted to take a second and uh check in with you guys and really um more than anything um uh, for some reason just share my um experience or what my experience has been um in entrepreneurship and how i kind of uh came into it and how it has now become um my sole way of income and so uh yeah we had to go back a few years and um i think i was i was living in houston at the time houston texas <laughs> and um i can't remember where i was working i think i was working for um a division of home depot and i was like a, a area sales manager for like their hardware uh fasteners nothing bolt stuff right all right so i end up um losing that job end up doing some stuff i ain't had no business doing and um end up losing my job and so even though houston is like this great um market for jobs which it is it's a very competitive market because there's a lot of qualified people um so me getting a job and bouncing right back into it wasn't something that ended up being swift and definitely not what i was accustomed to especially because like back home in kansas city uh, which is where i live now and home for me um I, I had previously you know being younger uh had previously experienced getting a job fairly easily and decent jobs at that like you know that was one thing my my friends tend to te uh tease me about one friend in particular uh it is because of, of the type of jobs that i would i would get but that was really uh because of a uh a decision i made but anyway off subject so i lose my job right and so i'm like i'm applying for jobs and i'm not really getting a lot of responses or if i am um it's not it's not uh uh it's not de delivering a job so whatever the case may be right and if i recall correctly i was like well okay cool i haven't been able to uh you know i needed to kind of accept the fact that this job shit is not going as smoothly as i thought it would and i need to come up with something and so my my first strike or my first uh, attempt to start a business was this uh, resume company. And I use company very loosely and business very loosely because um, <laughs> like I, it's nothing that I, I, I uh, formally formed with the state or anything like that. Like there's, there's no EIN for this company. Like it was just something that I uh, was setting out to do. I, I was was able to usually, I mean, I was able to articulate myself well on paper, and, um, and yeah, so, you know, I was gonna do a resume writing service, you know, my resume, uh, tend to do very well, it got me in front of a, a lot of em employers, you know, whether I, me personally, whether I was able to close, or whether I was the best, uh, candidate or whatever, you know, at the time, maybe I wasn't hired, but it got me in the door, it got me, you know, a lot of interviews, you know that's your first impression and so i knew I, w I was i was pretty doggone decent at uh doing that you know and taking highlighting skills or talking about accomplishments or whatever the case may be so i started this company i made a little facebook page and i forget the year this has got to be like 2015 or 16 ish i want to say and so uh naturally i don't have any customers right so you know if, i think i help out a few friends and a few people do pass my name around so i end up helping a few people but the thing was you know i wasn't charging nearly enough to even pay a bill i mean within the the time that it existed which wasn't long uh you know i maybe made 200 bucks which is probably you know servicing four people i think i was doing it for like depending on 50 dollars to 100 dollars, depending upon uh who you were <laughs> you know if, if we had a relationship or if you were a complete stranger or whatever and what you needed to naturally you know what kind of position you were applying for you know me to curate a resume for you to work you know at a place that doesn't require uh certain past experiences or past yeah 
would be a lot cheaper than, you know, a place that would require you to have some type of technical or other, other specialty experience. So, yeah. So, yeah, I had like four customers. It was a flop. And, you know, one thing they do always say about new business owners, you know, is most businesses don't make it. And that's so true or that, you know, most business owners, you know, they fail the first five times. And, you know, I never really thought about it, but before I was able to really sustain myself or continue to, to you know, I guess, support myself on a regular basis, I probably had to fail about, about five times. You know, after that, I ended up going back into the regular workforce, I ended up getting a job again and um, did that. And so my drive to really have a business kind of subsided. I was more focused on the job at hand. Um, I'm trying to think where did I end up working. I think at that time, that's when I started working for Kellogg. And so I was, uh, my, my area of expertise was sales. I, I did sales. I, when I decided to, I didn't graduate from college. I attended a college, uh, HBU and, and uh, HBCU, in fact, uh, University of Arkansas at Palm Bluff. Uh, shout out to the Golden Lions, Palm Bluff, what's up? But uh, I went there for three years. I didn't complete my degree. But what, one thing I did decide is I knew that I needed a skill set. Right. And I knew I couldn't just go out and aimlessly get jobs. And so what I decided to do is I looked up, you know, what's the highest paying fields for people that didn't have degrees? Because, you know, the the, the mindset back then is if you didn't have a degree, there was not going to be positions or a job or anything waiting for you as an adult for you to be able to feed your family. So I'm like, shit, you know, uh, because of certain circumstances, I needed to move back to Kansas City. Um and yeah, so I was like, but I need to be able to do something. And, and especially in lieu of me finishing this degree. So I was like, sales, you know, I don't, I, I'm not very, uh, I'm not very much an extrovert or anything like that, but I don't mind, mind talking to people. I can hold a conversation and, um, sales seems cool. You know, you meet people, build relationships, uh, solve problems, you know, it's cool. Right. So I, I, I chose to go into sales. So anyway, get the position with Kellogg in sales. And so I'm doing something similar. I'm a territory sales manager or a territory sales representative. Uh, and I'm just, you know, going to stores, talking to store managers, talking to um, the grocery department heads and stuff like that, selling uh, displays or whatever the case may be. That's not even important. But uh, so my ambition to be an entrepreneur kind of went to the wayside. I'm feeling comfortable again. I got a job. I got benefits again. And, you know, that's my focus. Well, somewhere along in there, and, you know, I never noticed a, noticed this about myself, but I was beginning to at this point in my life, I, I would say probably like four months in, the newness kind of wore off, and um, I was, not that anything was wrong with Kellogg or anything, but it's just a certain, kind of like I spoke about in that last video, it's just kind of a certain environment or or uh, atmosphere and climate you got to deal with when you work in, in those different organizations and with their clients and their customers. Um, it, yeah. And, and with that, it kind of, to it kind of uh, started to wear on me. And that coupled with the fact that I was like, you know, I was living in Houston at the time and although I was making all right money, I guess, especially not to be having a, not to have a degree, uh, because you know, one good thing about sales and that was another aspect of it is that you get, you usually, um, get a base salary plus commission or, you know, some type of performance based pay. So cool. And, um, but yeah, so the, those little microaggressions coupled with the fact that, uh, I, I had ambition to make more money cause I'm looking at stuff around me, you know, I'm like, Oh shit, I want to be able to do this. I want to be, you know, able to be here and be there and all this, that, and the third. So, you know, the thoughts of having a side hustle or, or that entrepreneurial entrepreneurial spirit kind of started to creep back in the back of my head. So this time, though, uh, I think that I was was going to do trucking and I was going to um, try to d do it with um, a cousin of mine. I think we was going to do like hot shotting or something, right? <clears throat> and so the theory of it sounded real good. We talked about it, talked about it. We didn't end up doing it. And so then that kind of fizzled out, time passed. And then I was like, man, but, you know, I, I think I got another job. Yeah, I'm working for, at this time, I'm working for a, I know I'm jumping around, but be patient with me. 
at this time I'm working for a fastener company or nuts and bolts company again. And I was a, a, a territory sales representative again. And one thing that I noticed when, within this job, because a lot of our customers were industrial uh, companies. They weren't like people, they were businesses <clears throat> that did, uh, did industrial things. So mind you, I'm living in Houston, so oil and gas is real big and other forms of manufacturing and, and uh, chemical processing and things like that uh, is real big in the Houston area. So those were the customers and people that I would be calling on and trying to sell my products to, products and services to. So one thing I noticed was, although we were all in proximity of one another, customers would call with like a critical need for parts or a critical need for, yeah, for a part or something and need a way to get it to them, you know, really quickly. Or sometimes it would be that we might have it in a, in what we would call a hub or a distribution center that might be within the state of Texas, but you know, it might be a couple hours, it might be in Dallas. So like four hours away or something like that. And so I would see them, well, they was like, well, do you guys, they would ask, do you guys have like a hot shot company that can go get it for us and bring it? And so, like, it was a question that our branch or our store would get normally. And I, maybe they were accustomed to it, but me being new working here, was, it kind of intrigued me. I'm like, huh. And so that sparked me to look into it. So I started looking up, like, what's high shotting? And it was like, oh, it's, it's trucking, you know, it's people just transporting stuff. And so that, again, like I said before, I had conversations with my cousin about it. And so now I'm looking at this coming back around and I'm really getting interested in it and um, thinking about getting into it so needless to say my next company adventure was uh hot shot so i uh managed to get a truck and um um start using this app or whatever um called you ship and things are going all right like i still got my job at kellogg and i'm and i'm um still i'm really finessing in a sense where like at times i might supposed to be doing certain things for them i might be on the road like i might be picking up a car in dallas so yeah i started using this app and it would let me like you know bid on picking up loads and so my job just got a pickup truck so i would look for different things people were trying to move it would be like rvs cars and stuff like that and so i was you know off to the races i was on it trying to make this work trying to you know get away from having to have a job you know and so things are going all right like i end up come into a situation where i need to transition and move back to kansas city from houston and so uh i end up leaving kellogg and started working for post in kansas city and then i was able to naturally take my business with me and so business is still getting good business actually started to pick up in kansas city and i started slipping it one of you know one of my first mistakes that i made like it it worked out for me but i guess some people could call it a mistake because it led to my demise but i started slacking at my regular job because i would be on the road like my these loads i would get it might be picking up here in kansas city or within i say 150 miles but i might need to you know shoot it out to cali or i might need to shoot it out and mind you in my role at post my job was to uh go to stores within i would say uh, a quiet state area so like kansas missouri Sometimes I go down to Oklahoma, um, and then sometimes maybe, <laughs> excuse me, I would go up to uh, uh, Iowa or even Minnesota at times too, right? So anyway, um, yeah, so that was supposed to be my job. That's what I was supposed to be doing. Or what I would do is I would be doing that, but I would I didn't book the load that's going to go where I need to go for, for my regular job, and I and tried to book a load to come back too, so I'm trying to get all the money. And... Um, but what ends up happening is, in the long run, I end up devoting more time to my own business. <laughs> and post calls like, hey, Tyrone, so you know, uh, you ain't been at these stores or, you know, this, this, that, the third, they adding up. And they let my butt go. Mind you, I just told y'all twice now, they got fired. Don't judge me because I can keep a job or I used to be able to now and got to. And so, uh, anyway, they let me go. And so now it's like, oh, shit, like, this is all I got. And so it's balls to the wall, uh, trying to trying to make loads and, and pick up loads. I, I it's to the point where now I'm like, I got my dad working with me. Like we driving, I got my truck. We running this mug nonstop, like twenty four seven, up and down the highway, and things are going good until my engine breaks down in my truck. 
And so, mind you, I had some breakdowns and some maintenance issues along the way. And um, they set me back for sure. But this was different. This was an engine. And mind you, it broke down in Wyoming. And actually, when it broke down, my dad was driving. I was in Atlanta. Just, uh, yeah, I was in Atlanta. Me and my girlfriend were uh, in Atlanta and um, at the Jay-Z concert. We were going to the, the 444 concert. My dad was in my truck in Wyoming and going up a mountain or something and overheated, meltdown, whatever the case may be. So not only do I need an engine, my dad stuck out there and my truck stuck out there. So finish up my week in Atlanta, get back to Kansas City. And this is what starts, well, no, the breakdown was the start of the demise, I guess, of, of my business. But now I'm having, I'm forced to rent trucks. And naturally, as you can imagine, this digs deep into my profit margin. And so a little bit of money I was making is getting ate up. Because now I got the expense of this this rental. And not only, you know, like with a re regular rental, you know, they charge you for access to the vehicle. Well, and what I was doing, they charge you for access to the vehicle. Plus, they charge you a per mile rate for towing. And so that, you know, even if it was like 12 cents, I was driving, you know, averaging anywhere between three and 6,000 miles a week. You know, just driving back and forth up and down the country. East to west, east to west, north to south, north to south, like all around this mud between me and my dad. And so uh, it was getting extremely, 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 extremely expensive uh, and to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. So um, found a way and was able to get another truck. Mind you, I still own the truck that broke down at the time. And um, the, yeah, when it broke down, just, just to put this in perspective of what i was looking at the, the shopping broke down that they was talking eighteen thousand dollars to fix it now mind you i do i uh have uh a ford f-350 it's a diesel and um but yeah 18 racks is what they was talking about i didn't have it not even a little bit no nah, i didn't have it not at the time you know every every little bit the money i was making you know was going to fuel going to try to maintain the truck paying bills and you know what little bit I could, I was trying to put to the side because I knew uh, something that I was going to have to repair on the truck because, mind you, I said I'm putting, like, 6,000 miles a week and I'm doing an oil change every weekend. Like, you know, fuel filters, is you know, all this just regular maintenance type stuff that I'm having to do to it because I'm putting so many miles on it, right? Not prepared for this engine to go out. So, like I said, I started renting trucks. Uh, and, yeah, that really started eating to profit. So, it just got to a point where um uh, i really had to to step away from that excuse me and and that was in probably 2018 but you know and at this time i'm doing really bad right because oh i didn't i didn't mention the reason i got out of that because i said I, I was able to get another truck well i ended up having another that truck i ended up getting it in november i think it was it had broke down by February, the, the beginning of February of the following year, the very next year it broke down. And so at that point, it was like, you know what? Let's just cut your losses. You still got a truck that's stuck in Wyoming. Now you got another truck that's stuck in Texas because this one broke down in uh, Amarillo, Texas. And I was driving it this time. I had to call my girlfriend in Kansas City like, uh, you need to go get me? She drives down, comes to get me. I had to leave my truck there. And so, yeah, and yeah, at that point, it was like, well, damn, what you going to do, you know, and, and, and shit getting hectic, like bills is getting due, getting passed due, you know, um, and, and it's, it's really looking grim and bleak. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, and I, I think one, one thing that you, any entrepreneur must, you know, have to say is that you got to be able to pivot. And so one thing that I realized is that, you know, driving those trucks was cool, but that's not what I was really um, sold on. It was really just the freedom. And I didn't really want to give that up. So even though I needed to make money, it was a great opportunity for me to go out and get a job. And, you know, um, I was kind of feeling that 
pressure from, you know, different, just different parts of my life because, you know, people looking at me, kids looking at me, kids, mom is like, I got, I have three children, you know, and so the mom is like, hey, you know, what's going on? You know, my girlfriend, like, hey, uh, what's going on? <laughs> what you about to do? And um, I, I just decided to uh, get into kind of like the home repair business. Like I, I, I would be on Craigslist looking for just labor type jobs. I, I really, I really didn't want to have to look for a job again, even though I was starting to kind of peruse or you know whatever look look here and there and, and see what I could see or see what was out there. I really didn't want to lock myself into another job. I knew I would get comfortable again. I knew I'd get lax. And I, and I enjoy too much being free. Like, uh, it's so crazy that, you know, I can make a hundred dollars out here, you know, on my own as an entrepreneur. And it would feel so much better to me than almost making, than making a thousand dollars at the job. And I mean, that's for several reasons, but it's just, it, it's just such a, a much more rewarding feeling. At least it has been for me. That's my experience. And so, um, I didn't, I didn't want to give that up. And, and I felt it was, it, it would be empowering to myself for me to prove to myself that I could feed myself and my family, those that, that I was responsible to and, and, and depended upon me. And so that's that's what I wanted to stick to and be true to. And so, uh, but although at the same time, you know, it's that kind of that conflicting thought, like am I being selfish and trying to continue down this path when I have people that need me? So at the same time I was applying for and looking for jobs, Although my heart was set on really trying to uh, remain uh, self-employed. And so I ended up falling into uh, home repair because I would look on Craigslist and, and different little and, and look at their gigs, postings and stuff like that. And look for people that were just looking for labor. And, and I knew that um, I just had I had a pretty good understanding of, of how to operate in that world. Like when I, when I was going to college, I. Uh, I was studying uh, industrial technology and had an awesome opportunity to meet a wonderful man by uh, Mr. O.C. Duffy. And um, in that, he, he had a, a, a construction company, on, you know, in addition to being a college professor. And so uh, one summer, he allowed me to work with him, me and my roommate, actually, and some other students, too. One of the most eventful summers, funniest summers ever. But that's neither here nor there for this particular purpose um <clears throat> but within this construction company we were working in schools in northwest arkansas um, um painting them remodeling them um installing ceilings and insulation and just all kind of things right so it was, it was really eye-opening uh and then also I, I was familiar with it from working with my grandfather and working for some of my uncles as i was growing up so i was very familiar with the style of work and the type of work and and so i i just jumped in there and um i forget the first name of the company that, that i started working with but the, it was just a company that would would find work or or home kind of like a home advisor but nowhere near as large and you know nowhere not kind of this not the same setup at all but similar in general theory and so uh yeah i started working for them <clears throat> and that was cool uh, I, just, I didn't like how it operated. Like I said, it was a lot different from something that was, you know, you traditionally see. And so, but I didn't mind the work, you know, I was, and I really got my eyes open to, you know, what people pay for this type of work and what I, and for, I guess for me, because of my past experiences was not that deep to me. Like it wasn't, um, you know, I felt it was a good exchange to make money. I felt it was a good business because it didn't take me a lot of mental power or a lot of even physical power in a lot of cases, but to make a substantial amount of money or, or, or a fair price for your work or whatever. And so I, I got into that and stuck with, and, and, and um, transitioned from working with them to also looking for work, additional work. So I started uh, working with this company that like clean gutters and um, installed like gutter debris protection or whatever so i would be on top of people's roof but it allowed me to still be an independent contractor i could just pick up work when i wanted to i could deny a job if i wanted to um it was just still all on me and you know they would pay me uh for taking taxes out i could claim my own taxes and deductions which was another plus 
because, you know, if I go back to a regular job, you know, I just get what left over after taxes as being an individual versus being, you know, a business owner, whatever. So, yeah. And so it, these little types of uh, companies and stuff that I was just able to find on like Craigslist allowed me to kind of just keep kick the can down the road a little bit more. It gave me some cash flow. It, it gave me it bought me some time to really, uh, I guess, uh dive into this type of business the way I had previously done with my logistics company and so my girlfriend was like you know I just want you to be as serious about this as you was about your, your trucking company type thing and you know that kind of stuck with me I was like well you know she's right in that regard like you know even though I'm really just trying to get by until I can see what else like I need to approach it just as seriously just as seriously so that's what I did and um i got a lot more serious about it we started advertising um started um just making like getting business cards to be more formal made a facebook page incorporated the business um got licensing as far as like general contractor licensing and things like that and and you know uh but i say all of that to say it ain't been easy and um the the uh being able to pivot and stick through it and stick to it has been very rewarding because you know you fast forward now and you know my life's a lot different like my you know i don't have some big huge booming business but i'm able to comfortably uh support myself and you know my family and contribute to my family and things like that uh as addition to you know <clears throat> save and plan for the future as well um, um, yeah, things have just been really good and it's all been a, a growing experience and a, and a growing process. And, um, I'm just so glad that I trusted myself enough to stick with it and stick through it. And even in the most darkest moments and times, like, oh my goodness, just didn't know what to do. And then also, you know, you, as a man, you, you, especially when you got people, when you have dependents or people that depend upon you, you know, when you start to feel useless in a sense, if you can't fulfill that role of providing and, and you know, fighting those different mental, mental struggles, uh, fighting those emotional struggles, uh, fighting those, you know, <clears throat> struggles with those people who were looking at me, uh, and being able to still, uh, just stay focused and, 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 and come out on the other end a lot stronger, uh, and, and definitely be thankful to all of them for being patient, patient with me, but, uh, believing in myself enough to think that I could do what I, uh, have done, and, and, um, yeah, and I, I just encourage anybody who's ever thinking about it, like, I know it's not easy, uh, nobody ever said it would be, but it, it can be so rewarding, the, the, Freedom, for one, I think is the biggest, biggest, biggest thing. And, um, yeah, to be available and present when I need to be, uh, to be able to set my, set my price, value myself, uh, as I, as I deem fitting, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's not one of these things where, yeah, you, you assign me an hourly rate, and now, now that you got me locked in at this alley, right, you could really tell me to do anything. And since it's my job or I'm at work, you know, I got, nah. Whereas in this, like, you know, I might charge you a certain hourly rate if I'm charging you as an hourly, you know, in an hourly fashion for to do this versus I might charge you a lot more to do something, you know, something else that's more complicated or more complex. And that is very empowering too. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's just, I'm just so glad that I just was steadfast in my belief that I, I could do it. And uh, I think so many people give up and quit so early. Like you try, you do it for, uh, I don't care if you do it for a year. That's not long enough. Um, it's not. Keep trying, keep failing, and keep learning and adjusting. Like I've gotten to the point where I just welcome failure almost in, in certain aspects of my life because it's such an opportunity to learn. It's such an opportunity. Like, it doesn't mean quit. It just means adjust. And if you could, uh, could just, hold on, y'all. I'm getting cold. I'm in my truck. Let me start it up. That same truck just broke down, or that did break down. I'm sitting in it now. 
And so, yeah, like I said, my life is just, just changed. I didn't pay $18,000, though. Don't be thinking that. I got the, I ended up getting the truck brought back to Kansas City, and, and it still costs a lot of money, but no, nah, I wouldn't. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, just believe in yourself. Stick it out. Be true to yourself. Uh, and, you know, not everybody's going to understand. The people around you are not going to understand. The people that you expect to champion you sometimes, they're not going to understand. And it's, it's, you can't blame them because it ain't hate. They just don't know no better. You know, a lot of people project their own fears upon you. A lot of people or can't see the future or can't see the sacrifice of today for gratification tomorrow. And, and if you can, just be true to that. Be true to what you already know. Be, you know that you got it. And, um, yeah, just believe in yourself. That That's so important. And just keep at it. Keep adjusting. Take the lesson. Like, don't feel defeated. That's another thing. You can't be feeling defeated all the time. Stuff gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Uh, like yeah, that that's just that's just just life. But you gotta adjust and you gotta keep moving. You gotta gotta be able to have a good attitude. You gotta be able because you know shit's gonna happen. It just is. You you and and especially if you're the entrepreneur, you're the boss or you're the one that's in charge. You're the one that people are looking to for you know for the resolve for whatever issues that are arising. That happens. And sometimes you gotta take a moment. Calm your head, do whatever it is that you need to do. Get your wits and then keep trucking, you know. Make a decision and, and move on. And and yeah, just don't feel defeated. Uh I, I think that's just so uh so very important. And and just the ability to, you know, keep on when, when everybody else around you is doubting you. Because that will happen. And that's okay. Just just stay true. You know, everybody who don't like proving somebody wrong. Everybody like proving somebody wrong. Are you, are you doubting on me? Or you know you uh, you don't think I can do this? So let that be encouragement. Don't let it turn into bitterness because, again, it ain't it ain't their fault. It's just that, you know, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that with y'all. I thank y'all for tapping in. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed it. If it was a good story, if you know an entrepreneur that could benefit uh, from just hearing another entrepreneur kind of share his story uh in, in my struggles you know and there will be struggles you know I, I got struggles to look forward to and i'm grateful for them because there will be lessons in them i can adjust i can move i can grow welcome to growth man um don't don't you know shy away from it embrace the growth embrace all of that shit because it, it will make you better peace y'all love